our next speaker is we talk about like stacking paper, man, and making some money and writing some big old cases. His average sell is about $7,500 uh, each. Maybe it's more now. I don't know. But the dude is brilliant. He's a genius. He normally wears a cowboy hat. I was going to say giddy up. He did not wear a cowboy hat today. Either way, he is still going to giddy up and teach from Snar Agent Academy. Please welcome Roy Snar. Hey, thanks, Cody. I appreciate it, bud. And I, I do have my cowboy hat in the truck, but inside the office, I don't usually wear it. But I got the belt buckle on and the boots, so it's all good. <laughs> Dude, I love it. Roy, you're a beast, man. You you care a lot about helping agents. You have a system and a process that can help agents write some big cases. Yes. Uh, Roy writes about seven figures a year worth of insurance and also helps a bunch of other people do the same. Uh, so thank you for spending your time today. Super high level, impressive, smart, some would call him a genius. And I would agree. Thank you for jumping on. Please welcome Roy Snar. Hey, thank you so much. Oh, what a great introduction. I don't know about genius. I'm just very determined, right? I just I just keep going. I fail and I fail and I fail and I just eventually you start winning. And that's my whole life story right there. So, <laughs> but yeah, to your point, we actually develop a, an entire academy to help agents increase their case size. And we do it with a unique approach and angle, which is long-term care. And before I get really into that, uh, I'm going to go tell you about my life story. Uh, so when I was young, my mother became disabled. Uh, somebody ran a stop sign, bam, hit her. I was about 14 years old. Now, 14, I had no idea about money, insurance, finances. I mean, I was trying to collect Pokemon cards and ride my bicycle. I had just no idea. But that one single event led to a divorce. Uh, my mom lost her car. We ended up losing the house. So our whole lives changed. I had to move a few hours away to live with my grandparents, with my mother. Everything changed because of one car accident. In addition to that, this happened to occur in 2001, the dot-com burst. So all of my mother's assets and father's assets were pretty much decimated because the person they had helping them was all about the high-risk uh, tech stocks. And so our whole lives changed, and that always really stuck with me. Uh, we did have one source of income, which was a social security disability income check. Again, at 14, had no idea what that was. I just knew that we were moving away and our life has completely changed. We were an average family, middle income, all that got taken away. We ended up living even in a travel trailer at one point in time. So things got really, really rough. So I come from very humble beginnings. And when I first started in the business, I always thought about my mother and how she became disabled and why why wasn't there something there, uh, some sort of coverage, uh, you know, an insurance policy, uh, you know, disability, long-term care, or God forbid if she did pass, what, what, what would have happened? Was there any life insurance, right? All these things started circulating. So when I started going to college, I started studying finance. And now fast forwarding almost 13 years in this business, I'm very blessed and fortunate that my mother is able to actually work with us uh, part-time basis. She can work from home and make calls. But that is the root and the, 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 the thing that drives me to try to help as many people as possible. And now together, we've been able to help thousands of people all across the country through radio, television, uh, our books, and also you know, webinars like this and other speaking events, become educated about asset protection, life insurance, and especially long-term care. Because my mother, even though she was disabled, she still had to take care of my grandmother. And this was all during the same time frame who was going through long-term care. She had COPD. My mother had to try to take care of her. We didn't have any money to hire somebody. Uh, in addition to that, my father's grandmother, or I'm sorry, my father's mother, which is my grandmother, was going through long-term care. And so that was a double whammy for us. There was no money, no resources. And for those of you out there that uh, sell Medicare, you understand that Medicare does not cover custodial long-term care. So my own family was going through this horrible process. We, we just started to barely recover from my mother's accident, the disability, and then all of our grandparents were going through this. Uh, my grandfather, my mother's mother, uh, thought dad, he had Alzheimer's, six long, miserable years. Very unfortunate. The guy was tough as nails, wouldn't ask anybody for help. Let alone six years into it, he had no idea where he was even at and was fully being taken care of by the family. There was no coverage in place, nothing. Nobody actually had that conversation with them. That's why we're so passionate about this. You have to start thinking about all the lives that you touch, the people that you're helping in your own practice, whether it be life insurance, assets under management, Medicare. Are you having the tough conversations with them? Kind of like what Josh 
uh, Joshua was mentioning before? Are you having these conversations? Because if you're not at least mentioning to them, hey, by the way, here are some areas of protection for you and your family in case something happens. They don't have to buy it. But if you're not even bringing it up to them and then something does happen, how are you going to feel? So one of the things that we help agents understand is the language to have the conversations. And, but first of all, to have the emotional connection, to want to be able to do this. Because you're most likely in this industry for more than just money. You're in it to help people, okay? And if you sit down and think, wow, out of all the people that I've helped, have I mentioned long-term care to one of them or maybe even life insurance? But let's talk about long-term care. Have I mentioned that to them? How important it is to actually have something. Can you share your own story? Think of it. Do you know anybody that's been through long-term care, family member? Because if you do, you need to really incorporate that story as part of your elevator pitch. That's who you are. It's telling your story. Okay. That has a lot of value. And then you can simply ask people, ask your clients, hey, have you been through uh, a long-term care event before? See what they say. Get them to talk. So you're not coming off as a salesman, use cars. No, you're just having a, a, an educated conversation with somebody. So let's picture this situation. You're helping people with Medicare. They're turning 65 or they're already after 65 or you're helping the under 65 people. You're helping them with some sort of health insurance or Medicare type of plan, okay? And you're sitting there telling them all the great benefits that Medicare has to offer, okay? It's going to cover you for this. It's going to cover you for that. We have this supplement or this Advantage plan and we're going to add this policy to it. You're hearing dental vision. Everything's all covered. How many of you are actually having the conversation of what it does not cover, okay? How different would you be in this practice if you were the one speaking about, look, everybody's gonna tell you what Medicare does for you, all the bells and whistles. Has anybody ever sat down and explained to you what Medicare does not cover, what it won't do for you? What do you think most people are gonna say? They're gonna say no. So this is a way for you to actually be different and to help people, okay? And when they say, well, what is exactly that the it does not cover? Well, hearing dental vision, that's one of them. And what do most people need at 65? Hearing dental vision. Now, of course, there's some advantage plans that cover that. But more importantly, I want to talk to you about something that happens to close to 70% of people. It's long-term care. Have you ever had an experience with long-term care? And let, the, let them talk. Most people that are the age of 65, their parents or the, a loved one, somebody... <laughs> Uh, in their family network, they've gone through a long-term care type of experience. They're going to start becoming emotional about that. I simply ask them, how did that make you feel? Oh, it was rough. You know, my parents did this, they did that. It was hard. Okay, great. Do you want to do that to your kids? And they'll stop back and they'll think, huh. Then I'll ask them, if this happens to you, hopefully it doesn't, but there is an overwhelming likelihood that it will. How do you envision that process occurring to you? Do you want to be in a nursing home? Oh, no, I don't want to be in a nursing home. Okay. Do you want to stay at home? Yes, I'd love to stay at home. How are you going to pay for that? See, a lot of people, they think, or they're under the assumption that Medicare is going to cover it. And at most, it covers 20 days of skilled nursing. That's it. Okay, 20 days. From day 21 to 100, it's a co-payment, which is incredibly high, and that goes up generally every year. And then after that's 100% on the individual. Okay. If they have any type of money or assets, they're going to have to spin that down in order to pay for care before they're even eligible for a potential Medicaid situation. So when we're talking to people, it's like, look, would you want to work your entire life to build up this huge nest egg just to turn around and spend it all down on an unfair healthcare system? Is that what you want to do? Is that how you want to be remembered? Is that your legacy? And it really hits people. Wow, that's, I never thought of it that way. Because if you think of it, it's a funny cycle in life. You start working, you pay taxes, you build up this nest egg. And then if you get sick in the future, all the stuff that's not covered by the government programs, you're going to have to spend down all those assets and get taxed again generally. Okay. So when people start thinking differently about long-term care, it can open their mind up. So again, you're not coming at this to sell them. You're coming at this to be like, look, let me help educate you and make you think a little bit differently than you may have before, okay? So now that their wheels are spinning, I'll bring up some interesting facts. I'll say, you know, we've actually done internal censuses and we've had other people do their own surveys. 
And we've reached out to people that are in nursing homes themselves and they're still cognitively aware. And we've asked them, if you could go back 20 or 30 years, would you purchase long-term care insurance or at least look at some sort of additional planning options? What do you think almost every single one of them said? Yes. And you can even ask your own clients that. If they talk about, yeah, mom or dad, they were in a nursing home. It was pretty rough. I would ask them, okay, yeah, I know I, it could be, it could be hard to see them deteriorating like that. Do you think that if they could go back in time and actually own a policy or become educated on the options that they have, that they would do so, that they would actually purchase something to help protect themselves and give them options and not create a burden on yourself or your, your kids? And they'd be like, yeah, I think they would. Okay, great. Well, this is your opportunity to help do this for yourself and your family so that your kids don't have to go through it. And that really strikes them. Okay. And then look at the whole time, I'm not selling anything. I'm just having a conversation, bringing it about. Now, again, you're going to get people that just don't care. That's just a part of our business, right? You can't help everybody. So for those that just don't care, right? You can't do anything for them. All right. You just got to move on. Don't take anything offensive. Do your best. But now at least you'll know you have the emotional satisfaction that you actually were out there able to help them. Okay. You were actually out there able to help them. You at least put that out there. So if their kids call you and say, hey, did you help mom or dad out with, with a short-term home health care policy or some sort of long-term care policy? Uh, you know, they're not doing well. We, we've called CMA, we called Medicare, we called Aetna or whomever. They're not going to pay for all this. They're not going to pay for all this. Why is that? And you have to say, well, ah, you know, Medicare doesn't care. And I, I didn't even bring it up to them. I didn't know about it or I just didn't care. I was too focused on one single sales line. Of a, of a product, of, you know, just going to sell a supplement plan or a final expense policy. You need to be having a conversation about long-term care. Here's what else they can do for you, okay? It can open up a whole other world of opportunity because most people, they want to sell annuities, right? They want to sell bigger policies because there are only two ways to make money in this business. Sell more policies, either yourself or through a team, or sell bigger policies, okay? So let's try to do a combination of the two. As Cody mentioned, my average case size is well over $7,500, okay? Because I got tired in the very, very, very beginning of my humble roots of door knocking, selling final expense and regular traditional life insurance. I got tired of having to sell 20 life insurance policies a month to be able to make a six-figure income, right? I got tired of that. I wanted to be like, well, what could I do differently and maybe sell five policies a month and have a very high six-figure, if not seven-figure income? And that's what we've been able to accomplish by increasing our case size, okay? And we're doing that all through conversation. If you already have a big book of business, you're sitting on an immense gold mine right now. You don't have to spend money on huge marketing uh, right now. You can literally pick up the phone, wait, this is my mouse, but pick up the phone and call your client base and say, hey, by the way, we are opening a division within our company that specializes in long-term care. Or by the way, we have a new person on, on our company side, they specialize in long-term care. Or by the way, during open enrollment, we were just so busy and slammed the new years and the holidays, but we wanted to take some time to reach back out to you as a value client. I just want to let you know what Medicare does not cover, okay? You can even send an email out to your database saying, hey, we're going to have a webinar for all of our clients. It's going to go over what Medicare does not cover, just so you're fully aware of your options that are out there. Again, you're not selling hard to your clients, but you're creating a massive cross-selling opportunity. And see, what most agents and advisors don't understand is that the long-term care marketplace specifically is dr dramatically underserved, okay? It is way underserved. It's so easy to have a conversation about long-term care because there's very little objection. No one's usually even brought it up to them, okay? And that is your door opener, okay? That's how you open the door to bigger cases. Just like Medicare is a, a door opener. Most people have to have it. So you're going to help educate them to enroll into the program, right? Now that you've, you've gained their trust, that you've got to know them, you can offer them other things like a cancer policy, life insurance policy, long-term care policy, okay? The long-term care policy then has to take a look at their other assets, well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, let's take a look first to see how much coverage you may need. 
what do you have currently that can act like long-term care insurance, right? Oh, you have a 401k, you have an IRA, you have all these other assets, wonderful. So all of this can be used to, to help protect against long-term care. Are you comfortable with spending all of that down and paying potential taxes on it and not knowing how much is there with market volatility in the future to pay for healthcare? Do you wanna spend all your life savings to pay for healthcare in case it happens? What do you think they're going to say? No. Okay, great. Well, there's some options now that we can actually help you with to put uh, in, in place there so you don't have to drain all those assets. What if there was a way that you could park some, uh, a portion of your assets? You could always give it back if you want to. If you pass away, your family gets it back. But if you happen to need long-term care, right, that for every dollar that you put in, this insurance company will pay you back $3. So if you put 100 in, you'll have 400000 total. And it's all tax-free. And they're going to be like, whoa, well, I never heard about that. Of course you haven't, right? Because it's not being actively managed in the market. And these big insurance companies, they don't advertise on television about these opportunities. You have to work with somebody who is a long-term care nerd or insurance specialist, which is me. And you can adopt this type of language and have this conversation with people, okay? And then the biggest objection that you may run into is, well, I already have an advisor. He said I can self-insure. Okay, that's the biggest objection that we come across. I go, that is wonderful. And there's a few ways that you can, you can combat this, right? The easiest and mo the least confrontational way is just to say, wonderful. I'm a big proponent of self-insuring. I really am. I think everybody should self-insure. They're going to stop back and look. I'm like, aren't you trying to sell me long-term care? Right? I go, yeah, I know. I'm a big proponent of self-insuring. And, you know, would you rather self-insure a dollar of your own money and get $3 back tax-free or $4 back tax-free? Or would you rather self-insure by $1 in and just $1 back? Which self-insurance bucket do you want? Oh, you want the one that has three to four to one paid back to you? Yeah, that's a better self-insurance route. Because remember, <laughs> the insurance companies aren't just going to give you insurance. You're still self-insuring. So you just want to adapt to the language and help people understand it better. The number one reason why people don't buy big policies from you is because you're not presenting the value to them, okay? So it's a value play. And this is how we open the door up. Our average single premium long-term care is over $100,000. Our average annuity sale is $250,000 plus, okay? And we're able to get this by partnering with Medicare folks, uh, financial advisors, doing workshops. And our angle is, hey, look, we're asset protection specialists. Let's talk about long-term care. And that gets a lot of people in, then we open the doors up to them, okay? So there's a lot of opportunity that you have just within your own, your own database to market long-term care. And I'm doing my best to try to condense uh, all this knowledge that we have into a very short time frame. but this is why we developed our academy, the SNAR Academy, which is a, a full breakdown. It has dozens and dozens of hours of me walking through step-by-step -step on how to do this, just like how Joshua has his programs. We also have programs that specialize in long-term care, weekly Zoom calls where we go over all of these objections. And we also do advanced case design for folks too, because the long-term care by, there's another reason why agents aren't implementing it, they're too scared of it. They think, oh, it's too complicated. There's too much to do. There really isn't. Once you understand it, it's not that complicated. You either have a, a policy that you're paying for on an annual basis, or you have a policy that you dump a lump sum into, uh, and then you either want to get your benefits paid directly to you, or you want to have what's called a reimbursement contract. And we walk you through that process. But the biggest thing here is don't look at the commissions, okay? We never look at that. We work with over almost every single provider out there that offers long-term care. What we look at is how many people can we have this conversation with to help, right? And by having a conversation just like that, if they happen to say, no, it's not for them, cool. I know with satisfaction that in my heart, I did my best to help them. If they didn't want to take advantage of it, that's fine. So if I get a phone call in the future from their family because we helped them with some other sort of insurance or because they have a, one of our postcards at their house or their family finds a letter that we wrote to them, I know that we've done everything we possibly can to try to help out with that family. And that's very self-rewarding. And the money will follow, okay? The money will come. Before you know it, like when I was doing this in the very beginning, I was the first couple of years, I made like 30, 40,000. I wasn't an overnight success story or I didn't have near the success as a lot of the other speakers, including Cody. Cody just totally kicked butt right when he first started. It was awesome. 
Uh, it took me a long time, a lot of learning curves, right? And I've been doing this now since I was, let's see, 21 years old, okay? And so it's been a long time of me trying to figure this out. I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing programs, on educational stuff to get here. And I'm trying to give it all back as much as I can to help y'all learn from my mistakes, not spend uh, money on certain things and to actually capitalize on what you have in front of you right now and how you could be cross-selling your entire book or partnerships with other people to cross-sell their book and to help so many people with an insurance coverage that is dramatically needed, okay? Imagine, imagine if you were able to just help 10 families and five of them actually needed uh, to have long-term care. And you are that person that helped provide an income for long-term care to help pay for the facility. That is amazing. And you know the commissions on these products, uh, they're anywhere between seven and 11%, some are six. So think of it. If you sold 20 Medicare policies, okay, you don't think that one person out of 20 would be interested in a long-term care solution. And if your average case size is 7,500 bucks, times that by your client base, how much money is that? So you get paid an, an insane amount of money to help people, which is awesome. All right, Cody, am I over my time? I can, okay. ramble, I can ramble all day. <laughs> no, you're right, buddy. Dude, you do an incredible job, by the way. Um, hmm. We actually did a, I don't know, if the, for those who don't know this, we did a, uh, Roy and I did a, uh, like a workshop for like four hours one day. And I threw him in the studio and, and dude went and trained and brought so much value. That was, uh, was that like, what was that a couple months ago? Yeah, that was fun. I flew up there and I just, I pulled an all-nighter at the airport, flew up there. I actually had like, had like ammonia going on. It was crazy. And we rocked that whole thing and it was a lot of fun. And we have another uh, workshop coming up here soon. And it's just, it's, it's an honor to be able to have the success that we have achieved through hard work and then to be able to vicariously share it back with everybody to hopefully make an impact on their lives. No doubt about it. Yeah. If they want to keep learning from you, um, how would they go about doing that, man? Uh, luckily, I have a really weird last name, Snar. So I dominate Google. I, I promise right. I'm not that popular, but my last name is so weird. But the Snar Academy is where we encourage everybody to go to. Uh, you can sign up. It's a, it's a membership program, but you get so much out of it. You get weekly Zoom calls like how we're having now, one hour a week, and you get private mentoring by me also. I love it. I would assume, man, if there's there's no chance someone does not spend, if they spend an extended amount of time with you, there's no chance they don't start writing big cases, right? That would shock me. The average person that comes apart in, in our academy or that we partner with, within the first 90 days, they're, they're usually have rolled over $200,000 in total premium. And that's either through an annuity or just through a long-term care. And that's just a realistic number. Now, the, the more work they put into it, the more they can get out of it. But if you look at the cost of training and the time put into it, it's, it's a hundred X return. And then once you learn something, nobody can ever take that away. It's a lifetime value. I love it, dude. You're a beast. Thank you for jumping on. on Thank you, Cody. I appreciate you, bud. Friday. I know you're busy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Roy Snar. Give him some eights in the chat for 8% as he's lighting it up. Brian Moore says fire. Roy, appreciate you, brother. Have an amazing Thank weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.